This is Mac OS Ken. Huawei looks to darken Apple's glow time. Business is apparently too costly for Microsoft and Apple. And a couple of bargains for the rest of the MLS season. It is Wednesday, the 4th of September, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. We are under a week until the anticipated iPhone 16 debut. And we are also under a week until an event from a company that apparently wants to take the wind out of iPhone 16 sales. Apple's event, It's Glow Time, is set for next Monday, the 9th of September at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Now a piece from Mac Rumors says resurgent Chinese phone maker Huawei will try to rain on Apple's parade less than a day later. According to the piece, Huawei has announced a September 10th event where the Chinese company plans to unveil the world's first (laughs) tri-folding smartphone, with the timing of the event and apparently deliberate attempt to upstage Apple's upcoming iPhone 16 reveal. Like Apple events, the world doesn't know for certain what Huawei will introduce. Also like Apple events, there's plenty of rumor and speculation. Mac Rumor says the Huawei Tri-Foldable reportedly has a 10-inch display when completely unfolded, yet still fits in a person's pocket. Personally, I still don't get the foldable phone thing. But China digs them. On an episode of the Mac Observer show a few months ago, Creative Strategies principal analyst Ben Meharan pretty much convinced me that Apple is going to make a foldable iPhone at some point, simply because consumers in China are so into the form factor. Looks like it'll be a while before that happens, though. The Mac Rumors piece has Taiwanese research firm Trendforce saying a foldable iPhone is not in the cards for Apple until 2027. Meanwhile, the piece says Apple is widely expected to release a large screen foldable iPad or MacBook before the foldable phone thing happens. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. Apple's glow time event is next Monday morning. The Huawei event, which is expected to include smartwatches and an electric car as well, will hit less than a day later. It is set for Tuesday, the 10th of September at 2 p.m. local time. That puts it at 11.30 p.m. Pacific on the 9th, according to the report. Apple's App Store revenue in the European Union seems to be going gangbusters, according to new numbers from Evercore analyst Ahmed Darianani. That is despite implementation of and compliance with the Digital Markets Act. Compliance should maybe be in quotes, but whatever. On Tuesday, Apple 3.0 ran part of a note that Darianani wrote that had the analyst charting year-on-year App Store revenue that was up 12% across the board and up 25% in the EU in August. Revenue growth in China continues to outperform at plus 9%, according to the analyst. That beat his team's expectation for mid-single-digit growth. The App Store and the Google Payment for Default Search position are likely the largest components of the services business, according to Darianani. Assuming neither of those falter, he thinks Apple could beat the street's services expectations, though he says compares get tougher through the end of this year. Mr. Darianani has an outperform rating on Apple's shares. His price target on the shares is 250 bucks. Despite revenue growth for Apple's App Store in the EU, a group of consumer groups in the European Union says all of the tech gatekeepers are failing to comply with the Digital Markets Act. A piece from Mac Rumors has BEUC, the European Consumer Organization, listing a number of ways companies like Meta, Google, Apple, and others fail the DMA. Founded in 1962, Their website says BEUC is the umbrella group for 44 independent consumer organizations from 31 countries 
Their main role is to represent them to the European Union institutions and defend the interests of European consumers. Having established who they are and what they do, here is what they have to say. Where Apple is concerned, BEUC says Apple employs non-neutral language to scare consumers away from choosing alternative payment services or subscribing to cheaper services outside the app, for example, music streaming. Apple's choice screen design is not compliant in many ways. For example, it fails to provide sufficient information to make an effective choice, and the user journey through the choice screen is confusing, complex, and creates negative friction. Apple does not make it easy for consumers to change their default settings, and Apple creates unnecessary steps to impede or deter consumers from switching to alternatives. Those are just the headings of four to five pages on Apple in particular. Mac Rumors notes that those are also issues that Apple is seeking to address with DMA-focused changes rolling out later this year and early into the next. While the organization acknowledges Apple's planned changes, Mac Rumors has the BEUC saying that the precise details of Apple's changes will need to be evaluated. Complaining along a similar line as BEUC is Microsoft. 9 to 5 Mac had Mr. Softy complaining about Apple on Tuesday and how difficult the Cupertino company's commission structure makes it to contemplate a cloud gaming streaming app. Citing an article from The Verge, the piece has the Redmond company indicating in a submission to the UK's Competition and Markets Authority that Apple makes it impossible for cloud gaming services to exist on the App Store thanks to one, Apple's in-app purchase requirements, and two, rules preventing links to external sites where users can purchase digital content. For its part, Apple points to the cloud streaming service and stream that has made it in the App Store. Apple says several others are in the works, according to the report. Apple seems to have sacked around 120 retail workers in Spain. According to an article from Spain's alternative news source, El Salto, and run through Google Translate, workers at stores in Barcelona, Madrid, and Valencia have been let go with the blessing of two of the country's unions, Fedeco and CCOO, and against the dissent of the trade union CGT. It is a tough story to follow, partly because of the machine translation. El Salto spoke to workers who requested anonymity out of fear of reprisal. It's unclear whether those were current workers or workers who've been let go. According to a summarization of their statements, there has been a maneuver to change the workforce profoundly and modify the structure of the company, which will now have fewer specialized workers and more young part-time workers. Workers who spoke to the paper leveled the same sorts of complaints that workers who've tried to unionize here in the U.S. have leveled, namely that they don't have regular days off or even regular schedules. Since the dismissals between the 21st of July and the 18th of August, Apple is said to have hired 40 young part-time workers with contracts of between 20 and 24 hours. They're said to have replaced folks who have been with the company for a decade or longer. CGT, which objected to Apple's confidentiality clause for employees, says most of the bounced workers were the oldest, most critical, and those who work full-time. The report says the now former workers were paid for 20 days per year worked, with a maximum of nine months. Apple outed one lonely developer beta to start the shortened work week. On Tuesday, Apple Insider ran a piece saying the company had ceded the ninth beta for Vision OS 2 to members of its developer community. The site sees the seed as odd for a couple of reasons. First, it was the only one Apple let loose on Tuesday. And second, it was earlier than one might expect. Apple tends to keep the betas spaced at least a week apart, according to Apple Insider, but in this case, it arrived six days after the last release. Look for the public beta to be released quarter past never. While Apple has been making public betas available for the next round of iOS, macOS, and most of the rest of its updates planned, 
non-developer owners of the headset won't get to try Vision OS 2 until its public release. And finally today, as time winds down for the 2024 MLS season, the price for watching the rest goes down as well. Engadget says folks wanting to catch the end of the season, including the playoffs, can do so for just 10 bucks unless they have an Apple TV Plus subscription. For Apple TV Plus subscribers, Apple's MLS site says the rest of the season is free. But you still have to subscribe, and it will kick in at regular pricing ahead of the 2025 season. If you're cool with that, though, or, you know, you'll remember to cancel, the offering is sound. The report says all matches will have English and Spanish audio, but you can also listen to the home club's local radio announcers if you like. Additionally, the season pass includes MLS 360, the show completely covering each match day, including pre- and post-game coverage, highlights, interviews, and more. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me, and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4020. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. I'm invisible!